Good morning, good evening, or whatever time it is, and welcome back to the channel. After a good six months of making absolutely no socks, we're moving away from the amazing ring galaxies that we were talking about last video and coming right back down to the solar system to our beloved neighbour, the Moon. Just kidding. We're talking about Mars. After two semi-successful, <laughs> sort of unsuccessful tries of knitting on camera, I think I've got the hang of the appropriate amount um, of knitting to do before I finish the sock on camera. So I've actually almost finished one sock. I finished the other one. It's right next to me over here. And so hopefully I should be able to fully complete this pair whilst we're filming and nobody will be able to interrupt me as well this time. So hopefully the camera angle is okay. <laughs> um, what I'm doing now is I'm just making the top of the sock. So that's just this little raised portion over here. You can see it's curving inwards to the toe. Um, basically all I'm gonna do is just keep on decreasing every round. Um, this is just, you know, the final part. It's very easy, everything's the same until I get to about eight stitches left. And then what I do then is I cut the, the yarn tail, this one over here, and using a sewing needle, or I'll try and use my needle, I don't know where my need my other sewing needles are, um, I'll just pull the pull the string through and then just close off all those stitches together to make a little, um, just a ring of stitches, it looks very neat. So Mars and Jupiter, I'd argue, are probably the most well-researched planets that um, we have, except of course, Earth. <laughs> Um, its diameter is roughly around about half that of Earth, but its surface area is equivalent to that of all of our oceans, uh, roughly speaking. So that's quite a nice coincidence right there. So another funky fact is that a day on Mars, a sidereal one that is, is roughly the same as it would be on Earth, which is about 24 hours and 37 minutes um, on Mars, of course. Um, that being said, due to its distance to the sun, a year is almost double ours. Mars actually has quite a fair few similarities to Earth, which is quite remarkable given the actual complexity and uniqueness of Earth. However, there are some very major differences that make it, um, well, how should I say, uninhabitable. <laughs> Um, one being the temperature being minus 60 degrees Celsius, that's quite difficult to, to live in for life like us. Um, also the fact that the gravitational field is about a third that of ours, at about three um, meters per second squared. And then also there's the fact that there's no ma magnetic field, which is quite important for life to actually survive on a planet. <laughs> These are all some things that a certain rich male might not have actually considered, or maybe he has, I don't know. But um, all I can say is that it's quite a blessing really for me to go out and the only protection I need against, you know, the sun is just a bit of sunblock. And let's just say we would not have that degree of freedom for sure if we were to live on Mars. Knitting and talking is a little bit more difficult than I remember, but I think we'll get the hang of it. In terms of structure, this is where we see quite a few similarities to Earth. So Mars is a terrestrial planet. It has a core made of iron or nickel, um, plus a few sulfur compounds as well. It's also got a mantle and a crust, so very similar to Earth. Our best theory of how magnetic fields work is the dynamo effect, and so given that Mars no longer has a dynamo effect, it seems likely that its own core has cooled down and stopped generating magnetic field. We actually know that it used to have a magnetic field due to uh, the fact that there's a lot of rocks which have been magnetised due to it in the past, which is quite interesting. The mantle has evidence of past tectonic action, which we can see from volcanoes such as Olympus Mons, which in fact is the largest mountain um, and the tallest one in the whole solar system. That being said, these are pretty old structures, so it seems that once the core cooled, everything followed suit and Mars has become a very inactive planet. I want to talk about my favourite feature on Mars, and that is its polar ice caps. So yes, Mars does have seasons, and yes, Mars has ice caps just like us. These are semi-permanent and made of water ice mostly, with a little bit of dry ice as well on the top of them. And what's interesting about Mars is that it's rather large tilt, which is about 25 degrees, um, will completely submerge one in uh, complete darkness and the other one will be submerged in complete light. And so what happens is with the, with the pole in complete darkness, so basically it's in winter, 
um, if you will. The carbon dioxide, the dry ice, um, it's cold enough for it to actually just chill on top of the surface and create a rather large ice cap. And what happens is as it moves over to summer and it gets submerged in complete light, um, the thermal energy from the sun's rays will actually heat up the dry ice and sublimate it. So it will turn into a gas and go back into the atmosphere and sort of shrink the ice cap a little bit, which is rather interesting. So the north ice caps is actually almost completely temporary due to this, but the southern ice cap actually has a little bit more water ice and so it can stay it's a sort of semi-permanent and a little bit of it stays all year round. For those of you who don't really know what sublimation is, I'll go over it rather quickly. It's not really, you don't really need a very um, in-depth understanding of it to understand how the ice caps work, of course, but um, a lot of materials will have a liquid phase, so H2O um, has water as its liquid phase. Um, however, some materials like carbon dioxide don't really have that in normal conditions, so it will just have dry ice and then carbon, carbon dioxide gas. So what happens is when it's solid and it transforms into a gas, we just call that sublimation. And deposition is the opposite of this, uh, although there are some other names for it, I can't remember what they are. This is a really simple, very simple way of explaining it, and of course this isn't completely true in many cases, so if you play around with pressure and temperature a little bit, there are some combinations which can sort of change the way um, a material might sublimate or not sublimate, you know, it, it gets quite complex and um, we won't really cover it today and I absolutely hate thermal physics for reasons we'll probably talk about later anyway. Right, but back to the topic of Mars. I know I might be taking a little bit of a creative liberty here, but there is a little bit of blue and white in this yarn. It's not completely red and brown as I would have wanted um, for a completely accurate Mars. There is a little bl bit of blue and white here and you could stretch and argue that this represents the ice caps and the water ice that resides on Mars. I went back to go get a needle and some scissors, so I think I'll be able to finish off everything and maybe sew in some ends <laughs> whilst I'm filming, but as I expected, I'm not really all that close to finishing again. So I'll see how quickly I can knit and talk and we'll see if I can finish it. I think I think I might be able to, but let's just hope. <laughs> Some other interesting things, um, there is evidence that water flew, flew? Flown. Had flown um, along the surface of Mars, perhaps in streams maybe. So perhaps there used to be a lot of water um, than now, which is pretty cool. Of course, um, having a magnetic field kind of gives you a bit more protection against the, the harsh solar ele elements. So it's quite understandable that when this magnetic field kind of disappeared, of course, um, other things such as materials on the surface would have also evaporated into the into space, <laughs> if you will. On top of that, some people believe that there may have been life on Mars quite earlier um, in the solar system's formation. I'm not so sure about this one. I mean, Mars formed the same time as us, so these aliens had to have sort of developed, grown and sort of die out rather quickly. So I'm not sure if that was really, that could have really been the case, but I'm really happy to be proven wrong. Honestly, <laughs> that would be fantastic if there were alien life. I'm right at the end. I'm on the last stretch. Look at this. I'm, ne I'm nearly finished. <laughs> oh yeah. And I also forgot to mention Mars also has two moons, Phobos and Deimos. They're really tiny. They're rocky and that's about it. Mars' atmosphere is actually mostly carbon dioxide, which is another reason why it'd be quite difficult to live there. <laughs> it's also very low pressure, about six millibar, and it's also rather dusty. Um, this also makes observing Mars rather disappointing in a way um, for small telescopes. I mean, with a good enough telescope, you can actually see some pretty good detail on Mars, but don't let that sort of put you off from trying to observe it regardless of what kind of equipment you have. It's, it's a really good sight to see and with a powerful enough telescope you might even be able to see some polar ice caps which is pretty cool. I wasn't planning on making an Earth video mainly because David Attenborough has done many of them and has done a better job at them in my opinion. <laughs> also um, about a year ago I made a very earthly green sock as well out of stress and just pure chaos, so I'd rather not go through that again. <laughs> I don't really want to make another Earth sock and a rather stressful socket that 
Um, that being said, I am actually going through quite an annoyingly stressful time as well. Thermal physics being the reason, of course. In all fairness, I did have to stop attending lectures and um, put a halt to an entire semester due to just a really awful housemate, so I guess there's that. So I had to rush home and complete my exams, otherwise there'd be no way of doing them with just five hours of sleep a night. I'm just gonna turn this sock inside out and weave in the ends and I will actually be done, like properly done with this sock, except for the cuff, which... Oh no, I did! I did do that bit as well. Wow, I'm so prepared. If there's any advice I'd give to you young people out there who are considering college, know your people, know your housemates uh, very well beforehand. Don't just move in with friends on a whim. <laughs> yep, if they're hiding something important about themselves and are not really willing to be open, you know, given that you're living with them, don't, don't trust them. Don't move in with them let them suffer by themselves. Luke, if you are watching this, please don't say a word <laughs> to anyone, just keep it zipped. Okay, I think, yep, yeah, we're done, we're done, we're done, that's it. Finally. <laughs> I've been knitting these socks and putting them on hold for a couple months now, it's a little bit stupid, but there we go, we're finally done with both of them. Okay. That being said, I never actually checked if they're both identical. I've I forgot to bring my knitting pattern back, so uh, this entire sock was pretty much just made with as much memorization, as much stuff as I'd memorized as possible, but it looks like they both are the same. That's pretty good. So there they both are, two Martian socks. Hold on, I'll see if I can, I'll try them. I'll try one of them on. There we go. <laughs> Perfect. My next sock will actually be a Jupiter sock, obviously. Um, I'm not really going to do an asteroid belt sock or like a... Oh, what's the name of that planet? Ceres. I'm not making a Cerean... Ceresian <laughs> sock. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, that's just not really something I'm planning to do and there's... I don't really know if there's any plain brown sock yarn in the world, really. And don't really want to have plain brown socks anyway. It was great to have a little discussion, well a rather one-sided one, about Mars and finally finish some socks that have been on my needles for a good few months. <laughs> yeah so now I can get on to something rather new and refreshing and yeah if you have anything cool about Mars that you want to just sort of talk about just put it in the comments below, I'd love to have a discussion. I mean Mars isn't my favourite planet, but it is really, really interesting and it's a fantastically complex planet, just as much as Earth is, as Venus is, as Jupiter is even, and it's just lovely to sort of discover something new about all these wonderful worlds that are so close yet so far from us. <laughs> Thank you very much for all my new subscribers and everybody who's just sort of been commenting and liking all my posts, it's, uh, not my posts, my videos, it's so greatly appreciated you know i absolutely love that people are enjoying the things that i'm putting out onto the internet so i'm really grateful for that and thank you to all my new 22 subscribers i feel so honored and so humbled to have people who just want to you know listen to what i'm saying about planets and like crazy galaxies and stuff so thank you very much and with that um i bid you adieu have a good week month year until I post another video again. <laughs> Thank you very much and I'll see you soon. Bye.